All right, folks, I've been waiting for Oliver Anthony's 15 minutes of fame to be up. Honestly, I thought two weeks was getting a little long, um, but I am unsurprised now. It is the weekend, and it appears that Oliver Anthony has been canceled. Okay, he's over. Um, he's no longer uh, the, the hero of the far right that we were told he was for the last two weeks. I must say, I'm shocked that it has come to this. <laughs> and I don't come here to, like, gloat or, you know, dance on his grave or something like that. I don't, I don't have a problem with the guy. He's fine. Um, and I, but I never talked about him, specifically because everywhere else was talking about him and talking about how great he was. And I thought, you know, this is pretty boring, and they'll probably end up <laughs> being disappointed since they are projecting all their feelings onto this person um, who uh, apparently is a hillbilly who lives in a pop-up camper, which does not make him a bad person, probably just makes him a normal person. And normal people, um, they don't really have a bottomless wellspring of wisdom. And so if he had a few wise words that resonated with people, um, the odds that he would be able to keep pumping them out for years to come were very low. But he had been put on this pedestal and um, expectations were created uh, for him to be the next Messiah. And I have to say the biggest red flag, the biggest indicator to me that his time, um, his days were numbered, his hours were numbered, uh, was that every day that went by in which I did not hear him endorse Mr. Trump that's the real test of a man. Does he or does he not endorse Mr. Trump for 2024? If he did endorse Mr. Trump, I would have said, you know what? Um, if his stock was publicly traded, I, I would put my life savings. I would invest my life savings in this man's career. But as long as he didn't endorse Mr. Trump, I was going to short him. And I don't say that because that's how I personally feel. Um, I think that anyone who follows this channel probably has picked up on that by now. But your perception, as far as the public is concerned, as far as people who are very much engaged with the zeitgeist, uh, with Twitter, um, people like this live and die uh, based on their loyalty to Mr. Trump. Because at the end of the day, the people don't carry don't care if you can carry a tune or not. That's not what matters to them. What matters is loyalty. And yes, I do think that the word loyalty has become the democracy of the right. Just like you have the shit libs that uh, that love to talk about my democracy and how voting and elections are a threat to our democracy. The right thinks that um, Trump deserves loyalty from people who Trump has never interacted with, never done anything to help, um, never just I mean, never had a good or bad interaction with them. Just people who have nothing to do with him. Um, they are expected to be loyal to Trump. And the word loyalty, you know, it always implies some sort of uh, prior <clears throat> relationship. Just like, you know, democracy, the word, kind of implies that there is uh, power vested in the hands of the people. <laughs> but these words these days, they mean nothing. And so when the general public hears the words from this Oliver Anthony character, and by the way, that's not even his real name, I... I called that from the beginning. Um, not that I said it on this channel, but the first time I heard that, I, I said that is not a real name. Um, which, I mean, it's not a scandal. It's not like the guy was lying or something. I mean, everyone, people in music always have stage names. But anyway, this, uh, this fellow, um, uh, he came out a couple days ago after the uh, Republican primary debate. And I hadn't seen all this, but today's a Sunday, so I was, you know, I was just browsing the Twitter trends. 
And I happen to come across this stuff. And I have, as I said, not really been following this person's situation. But I finally started seeing people saying very nasty things about the guy. Um, and so I was, I was peaked. You know, my interest was peaked. And I just, I had to find out what was it? Why, why, did the, why did the Twitter mob finally turn on this guy who they were absolutely in love with for the last two weeks? And surprisingly, it was after that moment in the Republican primary debate on Wednesday in which uh, Fox News asked, I think it was DeSantis, uh, something about the song, which I thought was just so cringe that they inserted this guy's song into the Republican primary debate um, and wanted to ask a question about it. It's just like, you know, uh, it, you know it's, it's like uh, when, you're, when your parents uh, wanted to put on, like, Tupac in the car on the way to school and, and and you know and they rolled the windows down and waved to the other kids and it's like you know you just come. my parents never did that thankfully um but I, I I know you know what I'm talking about that kind of thing and who knows maybe the people listening to this maybe you're maybe you're too old for your parents to have even thought of putting on Tupac because <laughs> you know there was it, that wasn't hip anymore by the time you were in school I don't know um, gosh, what's a more recent, what's a more recent rapper? I almost said Eminem, but then I thought, no, that's, <laughs> Eminem's so old now, too. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know modern music, excuse me. But you get my point. It really made me wince. And this guy, I think he cringed pretty hard, too, because he had to put out a response on Twitter, and he's like, you know, hey, or, or was it somewhere else? I don't know. I think it was in the form of a video, and I didn't watch the video. But he's just like, hey, DeSantis, because DeSantis, his interpretation of the, of, the, of the song was, of course, well, see, this is why we got to get rid of Joe Biden. This, that's exactly what this song means to me. I think that, that might have been the, the question, something like that. You know, what does this song mean to you guys? What do you think that he's singing about? And DeSantis is like, we got to get rid of Joe Biden. We just got to do it. It's what must be done. And so rather than just, you know, let the cringe go... The artist himself decided to come out, which I mean, I don't, I don't fault him for. Um, I don't think he did anything wrong. He came out and he, he decided to clarify. Um, I didn't write the song about Joe Biden. I wrote it about politicians in general. I think was the, the gist of it. And so now people are very mad because he will not. Um, you know, I made it about Trump earlier. It's really not about Trump. It's about the fact that he will not specifically. Um, condemn Joe Biden in particular as a, as a unique evil. It's kind of like what happened um, to a lot of people on the left when Trump was president. Um, people on the left who, uh, like Jimmy Dore, for example, not Trump fans. But that didn't make them fans of Nancy Pelosi either. <laughs> and so when when they would come out and you know they would they would talk about uh, you know whatever problems of the day there were in politics. Jimmy Dore would come out and say something that he didn't like about Trump, and he'd go, "But I don't like you Democrats either." And when people on the left do that, does that, the the right really likes it. But when someone that uh, they perceive to be on their side to begin with, like this uh, country music singer fellow. Um, they get very upset when they do that. They get very upset that this guy says, you don't know, no, I actually, I don't like Republicans either. You know, now, he, that guy's the devil. He's a traitor. And the media is talking about how um, he's basically a Biden supporter now. No, he smacked down uh, DeSantis, and he said, no, this song is not about Biden. It's about how bad Republicans are. And how Joe Biden... Uh, he's, he, 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 he fixed inflation with the Inflation Reduction Act, and he's putting Americans back to work with Bidenomics. And so now this guy is trying to, you know, come back and say, you know, you don't, no, I don't like Biden either. It's, it's too late, you know. Guess what? They all hate you. That is what the Internet turns into. Okay? You know, you're saying you don't want to be political. Well, people are mad at you because you don't want to be political. You're, you just want to sing country songs on your on your guitar and, and post them online. Well, that's not good enough. You want to live in your trailer and, you know, go to work every day and, and come home and write music? No. 
you need to stand with Mr. Trump, and you must condemn the demon rats as uniquely evil. And this is why we can't have nice things. No, I don't think this guy's a victim. Um, you know, the way I look at it, he was able to, I guess, um, uh, trick people for two weeks into thinking that they, that he was everything they dreamed of. I don't think he did that intentionally. Um, but people for two weeks apparently thought he was someone very different than who he is. And so they bought his music. And I don't, I don't know, maybe they'll be vindictive and try to do chargebacks. But I don't know if you can do that with iTunes and all these other sites where you, you know, buy music. But, um, um, you know, he's made a lot of money. He can probably buy himself a house now, a real house, and get out of his trailer or build a house on his property, uh, assuming he owns it. And then he can go back to living his life and not have to deal with these people. So, you know, if, if that's the case, then uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good trade-off, you know. You were beloved for two weeks and then hated uh, by people on Twitter, but you got a bunch of money out of it. You know, I would take that. I'd be okay with that, I think. Um, I don't know. The, the hate part is tough. I, I struggle with hatred. I don't like being hated. Um, you know, what, something that stopped me from creating a YouTube channel like this all the many years ago was I was afraid of being hated. Because, you know, it doesn't feel nice, even if you know in your head, you know, these people don't matter. I think some people just don't want, um, just don't want that weighing on them. You know, because you, you got enough to worry about with just normal life stuff. You don't need random death threats on the internet. But if the random death threats were accompanied by tens of thousands of dollars per day over the course of two weeks, ah, I think I could learn to live with it. The question is, how, how does this follow him throughout the rest of his life? You know, is this guy's life going to be destroyed? Is he going to be fired from his job um, that he does have? Um, actually, I don't know. I don't know much about him. I don't know what his job is. Um, but assuming he can hold down some kind of job and just go back to living his normal life with all this extra money. Ah, yeah. So his 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 period of fame is over. His music sales will probably not fall off a cliff. Well, no, it probably will in relative terms. But he'll still be able to sell some music. He's not going to be a, a number. He's not you know going to be the number one recording artist. You know, moving forward, as he has been in the past two weeks. And honestly, I think the hatred for him is probably very much a Twitter phenomenon because. Um, I think, and even even to know what this guy has said outside of his music, you probably have to be uh, what they call terminally online, like me. That is, unless you follow the mainstream media, which I think has been running with the story for the last couple of days, um, something to the extent of Oliver Anthony endorses Joe Biden and, and wrecks Ron DeSantis. So I don't expect to talk about this fellow again. Um... So with that said, uh, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.